Thank you so much for joining us on The Dwelling Show. I'm your host, Ola Dantes. I've got an incredible, amazing guest with us today, Daniel Johnson. Hey, Daniel, how's it going, man? Hey, Ola. Thanks. It's great to be here. Doing well. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So I know a little bit about your story, kind of what you're doing, but I think you do a way better job than I can. Um, kind of tell our listeners a little bit more about who Daniel Johnson is, um, what you've been doing, kind of what you've been doing lately, actually. Yeah, absolutely. So so I've, I've been in real estate for, I mean, going back to 2007, just before the uh, financial crisis and bought my first property way back then. And you know, over the last, call it, you know, 14 years, um, I, I've kind of been s- staying engaged in real estate and and really jumped back in headfirst uh, following the financial crisis back in 2014. And kind of my story started there is when my wife and I bought a um, kind of a house hack type of a property where it has a, uh, a, a, a one bedroom apartment in a garage behind the house. And started renting that out and then just continued to, to snowball it, to, to pick up more and more properties. And um, last year, I think, uh, you know, we, we, we bought a handful of properties uh, both individually and with some partners and um, yeah, just kind of continue to, to roll along with both long-term rentals and short-term rentals. So Airbnbs are really a, you know, primary piece of our portfolio as well. Okay. So yeah, I want to kind of jump on that. So I, so love the story started with house hack that's how my wife and i started um but now you're kind of doing short-term rental you know airbnb some people might know about that some people might not um so looking at your portfolio today what is the biggest chunk in terms of your real estate holding score i want to see if we can kind of focus on those yeah yeah absolutely so our 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 biggest uh by far is short-term rentals um we have um, probably I would say 70% of, of the portfolio, which is, you know, it's portfolio is now about 11 properties, you know, so about seven, seven of those are short-term rentals. And then we have a couple of nurse housing, which is, you know, you, you, that's kind of in between short-term rentals and long-term rentals where you have a furnished house that traveling nurses come and stay in for three to four months. Um, so it's kind of a hybrid of short-term rental, long-term rental. Fascinating. And yeah, and your pedigree is pretty extensive. You also do financial planning. So, but I, I think we'll kind of talk on, on that later as well, but I want to kind of um, jump back to the beginning. So why did you ask that? Why did you, you know, buy a duplex? You could have been living your life, doing well, you know, why do this? Why actually jump into real estate? Yeah, you know, it, it's it's always been one of those things that in my in the back of my mind I've I've always looked at at real estate as um, as an asset that has a lot of advantages one um, the banks banks love real estate they love to lend on real estate um, and then two there's always a supply of folks to to rent homes whether it be long-term renters short-term rentals doesn't matter there's always a, a supply of, of renters so you you know, if you're building a business, you're always kind of looking at what what product are you going to offer? Who's going to buy that product? And who are the, you know, the, the, the pieces of the puzzle in between? When I'm looking at it, I'm like, hey, look, it's it's one of those things you can start building a business and you already know who your customers are. You know, you can go list the property on, you know, back in the day, it was on Craigslist, then it became Zillow. Now you've got all kinds of different places that you can, you know, just public publicize. And within just a couple of days, you can probably have the property rented. So, it just made so much sense to me to say, well, look, I'm going to buy a two unit property. I'm going to live in one unit. We got to have a place to live. We can't camp in the backyard. So I'm going to live in one unit. And then the other unit, we're going to rent. And whether we do long-term rental, short-term rental, it didn't matter. It was like, hey, look, that's going to cover a bulk of our mortgage payment. And, and you know, just for me, it was a logical, it was a logical step that, that you can take uh, from starting with nothing to buying an asset that can start uh, producing some income for you. Awesome. So I guess you, you guys got your feet wet. You were like, this is really good. And then you kind of made kind of, um, you know, that jump into buying more properties, but then specifically um, Airbnb and short-term rentals. So for those who don't know what short, short-term rentals is, just kind of just break it down a little bit for us um, as to kind of how that works and, and why, you know, people are making money off of that right now, especially we're just coming out of the pandemic. Um, just kind of walk us through that. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, so short-term rentals, I mean, you know, they, they came around probably, I mean, Airbnb is the primary company most folks know about, but VRBO has been around for quite some time where they've, they've done, you know, more traditional vacation rentals at the beach or in the mountains or, you know, at tourist de destinations. Uh, but Airbnb kind of came out as, as this, you know, kind of hybrid, like urban model. And we were, we were living in, Air, in, in Asheville, North Carolina at the time. And, you know, in 2014, 2015, Asheville was really picking up a lot of speed and a lot of people were wanting to come and tour and, you know, um, and see the place. But there was, a, there was a shortage of, of good hotels and accommodations. And, and we saw Airbnb as a possibility to, to utilize that, that house that we had or the, the, second, the second unit we had. And basically, the, you know, what it is, is you really, you put furniture in the, in the property and you, you pay for all the utilities. You, you, you have a nice TV and a nice bed. You know, uh, you have a kitchen that's fully stocked with, uh, you know, cooking items and stuff like that. And you just welcome people in and you just say, hey, glad, glad you're here. And, and they come in, they stay at your place and they stay, you know, they pay you a, a nightly fee for it and a cleaning fee. And, and you just kind of rinse and repeat and you, you kind of set up systems and processes to make it more scalable. Wow. Interesting. So you guys, you guys are obviously doing pretty well. Um, is this just, you know, mainly you and your wife running this? Because usually with Airbnbs, um, you know, the, it could be a lot, right? You know, just kind of turning those units when the guests leave or do you have a team or how, how's that, how's that looking for you guys right now? Yeah. So that, that's, that's a great question. My, you know, to start with, it was just myself, and my wife, and we kind of did everything. But uh, more recently, in the last couple of years, we, we partnered with, um, with an individual. He, he has his own Airbnbs as well, and he's a property manager. And so we, we just partnered up with him and we, we bought some properties together. And so we've outsourced a lot of, a lot of the actual day-to-day -day management of these properties um, to him. Since he's a property manager, he's in, he's in the business. He he manages about uh, 25 units now. So um, so we kind of delegated uh, a lot of that away to him. But we still have some of our own properties locally where we live now in Winston Salem, North Carolina, and we continue to manage those on our own. Interesting. So for you guys, you guys are just buying this and Airbnb, right? I've heard some people doing you know um airbnb arbitrage there's you know different um, strategies like subleasing and, and things like that are you guys doing that um or you guys are just kind of owning your own property then doing the airbnb and, and, and if if you guys are not doing that why yeah so we, we we are primarily uh buying our own and 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 running it uh, that way and the way that we see it is it's it's an equity build it's a, um, you know, we, we, we have the ability to, um, to depreciate the property, receive tax benefits on that end. Um, but we have, we have experimented with the arbitrage model. We, um, it was kind of a market study in, in Winston-Salem. We wanted to find out, will Airbnb work in the market? But we didn't want to go and buy a property if it wouldn't work. Um, so we did go out and, and, and rented a property from a, a landlord that couldn't place a, a tenant in it. And we, we did a little bit of work to it. We fixed it up, made it, made it all nice, furnished it and started um, doing Airbnb with it. And we saw, hey, look, it works really well here. So um, once we had that, um, the understanding and the idea of how to do it, um, then we actually bought a property and, and, and swapped out all that and gave up the lease and, and used our own property. We just, we just prefer to use our own property because we have control over the um, control over everything associated with it because we have a certain level of um, we have, we have a certain level of, uh, that we want to keep as far as a, um, you know, just the experience that the guest has. And if we are not the ones owning the property, if there's a roof leak or if there's a plumbing leak and we can't get the, the landlord to uh, fix it, we end up fixing it anyway. So, and it comes out of our pocket. So we're like, Hey, if we're going to end up doing that, we might as well own the property ourselves. Yeah. Uh, no, I, that, that makes sense. Absolutely. That makes sense. So I think kind of just kind of pivoting a, a little bit um, before I get into kind of your financial planning, you know, piece. So, I mean, what is the, what is the future goal? Yeah. You've got your properties, you've got your, your partner with this, you know, the PM company, the property management company. What is kind of like the, 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 you know, the future goal for your business? 
Yeah, you know, our, our goal is really just kind of a slow build. You know, we just want to continue to acquire properties over time. You know, we're we're certainly on the lookout for for Burr type of of deals where we're we're you know buying something that's a little bit under market. You know, improving it and then um, and then renting it out uh, and. And so it's going to be kind of a slow, slow build for us. We're, we're not, we're not in any hurry. We just want to be smart about it. We don't want to overextend ourselves or over leverage ourselves. And um, it's just a lot of fun on that end, but, but I've really, we are really starting to lean a little bit more into the travel nurse um, housing side because one, it helps, it's easier to scale because you're not in there having to worry about cleaning crews and turning over the, the, the units all the time. You're basically only doing that every three to four months and the income after you kind of subtract all of your expenses typically ends up being somewhere in the same neighborhood um, as far as your, your, your net profits. So, so we're leaning a little bit more into that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the goal is to continue to kind of build. We're, we're looking at some commercial properties at the moment, you know, to, 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 to try to utilize both a, a residential twist on, you know, like some downtown type looking properties. Um, but, but yeah, we're just, we're on the hunt for, you know, continue to build out the portfolio, but doing it slowly, not in any hurry. I can totally relate. I can totally relate. So you also, you know, you, you do financial planning, right? So I definitely want to touch on that a little bit. Um, you are a CFP professional and then you're a certified exit planning advisor as well. So CPA. So, can you just kind of touch on that a little bit and kind of what you're saying? You know, um, I think I saw the news recently, Dogecoin or Doge, Doge Ecoin mm-hmm. is, is going crazy right now. Um, you know, of course, it's a real estate podcast, but I'm just kind of curious to hear your opinion on just, you know, all the financial acts that you may have and just your general opinion of cryptocurrency right now and how mm-hmm. crazy things are going lately. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a lot, it's, I would say for, for anyone that is interested in financial markets right now is a really, really um, interesting and fun time. You have a, you know, you kind of have a a mixture of a lot of different things, you know, new technology that's being introduced and you have a lot of really innovative companies that are doing a lot of interesting things, but, you know, and and I'll kind of get back to the crypto and, and some of those things. But on the financial planning side, you're you're right. I'm I'm a certified financial planner, and um, I my financial planning company is a fee only financial planning company, which means that the only way I'm paid is by my clients. I don't sell any products or anything like that. Or, yeah, I, I don't sell any commissionable products or anything like that. So, um, I specialize in working with real estate investors. Um, just you know, because that's one I know the crowd pretty well, and. And I noticed that there's there's kind of a lack of folks that are out there serving this audience, and um, and so that's you know that's something that I started uh, earlier this year, uh, started my own financial planning company. Prior to that, I worked for a large uh, large financial planning company for about seven and a half years, um, working with a lot of great clients over there. But um, so you know, as as it pertains to to kind of investing, you know, I think I think that real estate is is a wonderful investment. That if if you are inclined to do that, then then you should think about doing that. Um, but uh, apart from real estate, I think I think there are a lot of other interesting things out there. Um, you know, my my particular focus is really on more passive investing ETFs. Um, that are not active uh, investments. I think that trying to time the market, jumping in and out is, is kind of a folly game. It's, it's really hard to do and most people can't beat the market. Um, but as it pertains to cryptocurrency, I think, I think crypto really is a, um, an interesting change in the world. And um, you know, there's, there's been a lot of news around um, the environmental impact and, and things like that. And that's, that's really causing a lot of, uh, you know, volatility in the market, but on an overall basis, I, I think I think that crypto is 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 a really interesting means of exchange for investors, for people around the world that may want to put some money into a store of value somewhere. And there's all kinds of different technologies and coins that are coming out that are answering the needs of of different consumers. 
And, um, and so it's a, it's a really interesting space. And I work with a lot of folks that, that have allocations to crypto and, and I certainly don't turn people away from it. But what I do say is you probably want to kind of, me, you know, keep it measured and not, not put everything you got into it, hoping that it goes to the moon. Uh, you want to, you want to be balanced in the way that you're, you're, you're investing in, in making a part of your portfolio. Fascinating. That that's, that's really fascinating. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I really like the blockchain technology, um, cryptocurrency. I, I still haven't got it into it. And then as I was trying to get into it, the NFTs came in. So I, I don't know. I'm just confused now. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> 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 I wish we can keep talking about this, but we're definitely, definitely sure. dwelling into the quick round. These are going to be quick questions, quick answers. You ready, sir? Sure thing. All right. First question. What is the one thing that makes Daniel unique? What is that differentiating factor that separates you from the next guy or the next girl? Uh, I was actually just talking about this with my wife the other day. You know, I, I think outside of the box and almost almost to a fault to myself. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm very much a contrarian thinker. Um, I don't follow the crowd in a lot of ways. And and, and that's that that's kind of my the thing that makes me very different from the rest uh, for the rest of everyone else I'm, I'm a contrarian thinker i like that i like that um what was the name of the last book that you read and what was the one thing you picked out from that book uh yeah so so i read um donald miller's building a story brand and and you know it's 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 really a a, a really great kind of Introduction to if you are working in, an, in anywhere where you are you're trying to sell something, if you're if you're if you're trying to engage another person, um, you know they are the hero of the story and 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 they're the focus of it. You don't need to make it about yourself. Um, so that that was a, a huge takeaway from that book for me. Oh wow, fascinating! Thanks for thanks for sharing that. You've got your three boys and your wife. Um, you know. You're, you're busy with your business, running your business, um, the financial planning, the, the Airbnb stuff. What do you do for fun? Uh, you know, I mean, what, what's <laughs> the, the pandemic has is, is really kind of changed some of that. But, you know, what's been really fun for me recently is being able to work from home and then go out in the backyard in the afternoon and just throw, throw a football, kick a soccer ball. Um, with the kids while they're out there, you know, running around in the backyard. That's, that's, that's what I do for fun now. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Really appreciate it, Daniel. Um, if there's somebody thinking, Hey, they want to get connected with you, maybe they're in the North Carolina market or maybe anywhere else in the country. What's the best place people can reach out and get to know you more? Yeah. Best place to find me is um, refocusfp.com. So that's just um, refocusfinancialplanning.com. Um, the FP stands for financial planning. Uh, my email address is daniel at refocusfp.com. You can reach me directly there. Um, check out my website, you know, set up a time to get on my calendar and, and, and just have a conversation. That's the easiest way to get in touch with me. Daniel, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ola. It was good to be here.